Uh, good evening, my name is Aaron Curris. I'm one of the spine surgeons at uh, University of Orthopedics. I'm also a faculty uh, at the Department of Orthopedics at Brown University. And today I'm here to talk to you about a very common condition called spinal stenosis. So spinal stenosis uh, comes from the Greek term stenos, which means narrow and refers to a narrowing of the spinal canal. So it can be caused by a number of different things. Some people are born with uh, a more narrow spinal canal to begin with, and that's something that we call congenital stenosis. It's also commonly seen with degenerative conditions. Uh, so some wear and tear on your spine and the joints in your spine can cause narrowing of the spinal canal. It can also be associated with the lifestyle and overuse. So here's a patient that has fairly significant arthritis. And when I say arthritis, I mean degeneration or wear and tear in the back. So just like you can get arthritis in anywhere in the body, such as in the hip or the knee, you can also get it in your back. So if you notice here, uh, between each of the bones in the disc space, uh, which is the body's natural shock absorber and short serves as the cushion between the bones, um, there can be degeneration of those disc spaces. Uh, so if you notice here, the top arrow is a relatively normal and healthy looking disc space, and there's plenty of space between the bones. But if you look at the bottom arrow, and the bottom arrow is at what we call the L5-S1 level, there's significant disc degeneration at this level. So if you look at the difference between the bottom arrow and the top arrow, these bones are much closer together, and this patient has essentially bone-on-bone -bone arthritis at this level. And so when, the, when this happens, it decreases the amount of room uh, for the nerves around the spine. And this, the nerves can come out of these holes on the side, which are tunnels. They're also known as the foramen. Uh, and whenever the space between those, uh, the, the space of those tunnels decreases, that can decrease the uh, space for the nerves and you pinch the nerves and cause things such as sciatica or pain that shoots down the back of your leg or the side of the leg. Here's another example, and this is an MRI cross-section showing the disc spaces. So on the left is the upper level we showed with the relatively healthy disc, and on the right is the lower level with the unhealthy disc. So all the nerves are in this center circular area called the spinal canal, which is shown by the, the orange arrow on the left. If you notice the orange arrows on the left, there's a lot more room for the nerves within the spinal, uh, the spinal column and those are seen as those black dots just below that orange arrow. And there's plenty of white space around them. The white space is the spinal fluid around the nerves. And if you see a lot of white space, that indicates that there's plenty of room. Now, on the right image, there is significant spinal stenosis or narrowing, and there is much less room and much less white space around the nerves. And this again correlates with that lower segment where that disc is degenerated at the L5-S1 level. The spinal stenosis can also occur in the neck, uh, as shown in this patient. So the gray structure, which is shown uh, by the orange arrow, is the spinal, the spinal cord itself. And then the white, as shown by the yellow arrow, is indicative of the spinal fluid. So if you notice at this one level down here, which is shown by the red arrow, that's C4-5, you notice that the flow of the spinal fluid is disrupted across there, almost like there's a kink in a water hose. And again, this is the C4, C5 level. So again, this shows in cross section through each of those individual levels that we looked at. And if you look here, again, you see the spinal cord, which is this circular gray structure in the middle there as shown by the orange arrow. And then the spinal fluid is the white arrow over there. And again, what you wanna see is that there's plenty of room for that gray circular dot in the middle. So this is a C2-3 level in that same patient. At the C3-4 level, again, it looks pretty similar. There's plenty of white space all the way around that gray spinal cord in the middle there. However, when you get to that C4-5 level that we pointed out on that other cut of the MRI, again, you notice that the gray spinal cord no longer has any room around for it, and this area has significant spinal stenosis at the C4-5 level. Now, when you get down to the lower levels, again, the space between uh, the space for the spinal cord is restored, and there's plenty of flow of spinal fluid around that. And same thing at the bottom level, the C6-7 level. So 
So the good news is that spinal stenosis often responds to non-surgical treatment options. A great place is often to start with some medications, such as things like ibuprofen and Tylenol. Physical therapy can also be extremely helpful as strengthening your core muscles around the spine can take a lot of the stress off the spines with significant arthritis and degeneration. And then there's also uh, other procedures we can do which are not quite surgery, but things like injection, which can certainly help alleviate symptoms. When all the other treatment options fail, some patients may be a candidate for surgery. It is important to note that the primary goal of spine surgery is to decompress the nerves and to relieve nerve type pain. Now this can be done through a variety of methods such as a laminectomy where you remove uh, bone uh, and the arthritis around the nerves of the spinal cord and create room for them and allow them room to breathe. And this is shown here by the orange arrow where we, where we uh, shave out some of the bone around the, uh, the nerves of the spinal cord to give them room. Thanks for joining us today on our discussion on spinal stenosis. If you or anyone you know would like to schedule an evaluation for a spinal condition, please feel free to contact my office at 401-443-4282. I see patients uh, commonly in East Providence, and I also see patients at our Middletown office as well. Uh, thank you, and I welcome any questions you all have now. It looks like we have a question in the chat box, and the question is, how do I know if I'm a good candidate for surgery? Uh, you know, something I always tell patients is my, my philosophy is that surgery should always be, you know, the last resort option. And I generally go through that progression that we talked about, where you start with things like medications and physical therapy, and then you potentially try some things like injections and then go down the route of surgery. Um, the injections can often be helpful because, you know, my hope is that they're therapeutic and they provide you benefit, but the injections can also often be uh, diagnostic for spinal stenosis, meaning if we do an injection in a certain area and you have substantial pain relief, even if it doesn't last, it does give us uh, some kind of an indication that you will respond well to surgery. Uh, and then I always say that, you know, surgery can work well when it's primarily done for things such as nerve type pain. We do see a lot of patients that have a primary complaint of back pain. And although it, in certain situations it can help with back pain, again, the primary goal of surgery is to relieve the pain from the pinched nerves or the spinal stenosis causing the pain that goes down into your legs uh, and into the lower extremities. So another, uh, another question we have is, uh, you know, I was told that I might need a spinal fusion. Is this a common surgery and is this the best option? And I guess the best answer to that is it depends. Uh, my general philosophy is when we do do surgery, I like to do the uh, smallest surgery possible. In a lot of these examples, uh, we can achieve our primary goal of surgery, which is to take the pressure off the nerves uh, just by removing some of the bone. And if we do, if we're able to do that without taking excessive amounts of bones, then that doesn't destabilize the, the segments in the spine. And in those situations, you can get away with what we call a laminectomy alone or a decompression alone. There are certain situations where patients either have significant spinal deformities, uh, significant instability, uh, or you have stenosis that's so severe that you have to take so much bone that it destabilizes the bone. And those are situations where uh, patients may be a candidate for, sur or for fusion type surgeries. Of note, you know, the, the fusion surgeries, they are bigger surgeries, they're longer surgeries, the recoveries are a little bit harder, uh, but they certainly can provide a lot of benefit when patients have some of those things that we talked about, such as the instability uh, or scoliosis or things of that nature. And then another question from our chat, uh, will I be limited in what I can do after surgery? Uh, you know, spine surgery is interesting because, you know, pain from a pinched nerve can be really, really, really debilitating. And it's not uncommon that I get a call from a patient where they have a flare up of their arthritis and their leg pain becomes so bad that they, they truly can't walk and they have to be admitted to the hospital. It's not unusual in those situations that we do the surgery and the patients wake up after surgery and their leg pain is actually completely gone. And the amount of pain they're having after surgery is less than it was before the surgery. Now, that's all a trade-off because you will have you know, soreness in your back from where we do the surgery and the incisions. 
but that will gradually improve over the course of about two to three months after surgery. There will be limitations during this time. Uh, you know, we'll restrict you from doing things like excessive bending, lifting, and twisting. And we really want you to take it easy, but day one after surgery, we have you up and out of bed and walking around, and then it's a gradual increase in your activity from there. Okay, well, I think that's it for the questions in the chat. Again, uh, thank you all for joining us today for our discussion on spinal stenosis. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching this. And if you uh, have any questions or would like to schedule an appointment, feel free to call my office. Again, that's 401-443-4282. Thank you.